we shall go into the next uh, topic regarding the analysis of a slab deck okay now in this we shall be discussing two topics one is uh, different methods of uh, the slab deck analysis and uh, one important concept while analyzing of slab deck is influence line diagrams now first we shall discuss the different analysis methods now there are different methods as you all know for analyzing a bridge deck remember one thing i am talking of only the bridge deck which includes the slab and the girders okay now their corresponding uh, analysis the method of analysis depends upon the type of deck it depends upon the plan profile and it depends upon the support conditions so which method to choose depends upon these three conditions now some of the methods which uh, we uh, which we shall discuss today are approximate methods while others are refined methods we shall be discussing in this class only some of the approximate methods refined methods is a bit uh, vast topic which uh, one of the methods only in refined method we shall discuss now the most common adopted methods you can see here on the left hand side here these methods are the corresponding approximate methods and these methods on the right hand side are refined methods okay now the approximate methods you have the effective width method okay the pickouts method the corresponding carbons method henry eggers method orthotropic plate models and yield line methods and in the refined methods you have the grill edge analogy method finite element method finite strip method and finite difference method now these uh, the methods I had uh, written on the left hand side uh, that I, I told you all the methods may not be used at all times. So depending upon the type of tech, depending upon the plot profile type of tech, whether it is a slab bridge or a beam cutter bridge or a box cutter bridge. In the plan profile, whether it is a straight bridge, a skew bridge or a curve bridge. And then depending upon the support conditions, whether it is simple or continuous. So as such you can see that the effective width method it is adopted only for slab deck and that too for a straight uh, bridge for both simple as well as continuous. Similarly pickouts method it is used for slab bridge as well as beam girder bridge then in only for straight profile and that too is adopted for simple and continuous. Similarly the carbons method and the Henry Eggers method both are adopted only for beam girder bridges okay and straight. But Henry Eggers method can also be adopted for skew profile bridges. Skew means inclined or the horizontal uh, inclination of the corresponding bridge and then both conditions. Then you have orthotropic blade models which can be adopted for slab and beam for only straight bridges. Then these two methods, uh, more refined methods of relay analysis and finite element method can be adopted for almost all types of decks and the corresponding profile either straight skew or curve or we can use with these corresponding methods so the final element method is the most advanced method that is now being used nowadays for anal analyzing of the bridge decks now in this lecture we shall be discussing only some of the methods okay the first two methods the effective width method and the pickouts method we usually adopt for slab bridges it is actually for slab analysis so we adopt it for slab bridges and the corresponding carbons method the henry eggers method and the orthotropic plate models which we shall be discussing today are meant for the girder analysis okay the girder analysis means you have a corresponding beam girder so there is a slab below which there is a beam girder so for that girder analysis we adopt the three methods which are at the bottom carbons method henry eggers method and orthotropic plate models so we shall be discussing only these corresponding methods in this lecture. Now first is the effective width method. Now in the effective width method, the corresponding assumption is that the point loads okay, are supported by a certain width of the slab called the effective width and the load is distributed over the entire width. So there is an effective width here. Okay, I can show you the next figure. So you can see in this figure there is a corresponding wheel imprint means the corresponding area of the wheel that is in contact with the surface of the road okay, that is called the wheel imprint and there is an effective width B effective okay there is an effective width 
be effective and hence the entire load acting on this corresponding part of the slab is assumed to be acting over this effective width and hence the bending moment calculation the bending moment calculation as such is calculated based on this corresponding v effective similarly you have l effective also so in this figure you see the direction of movement is along this direction okay you have a wheel imprint here this is a simple slab bridge i'm discussing right now a simple slab bridge okay so you have wheel imprint here you have a v effective here and an l effective the corresponding load of the wheel or the track is distributed over this corresponding width so as such we calculate the bending moments and uh, shear forces as if the corresponding load is acting over this entire set area so this is what we mean by effective width method now the effective width method is only suitable for uh, two cases one is simply supported slab that is supported on two opposite edges so in this corresponding figure you have this slab is simply supported on these two at abutments here okay and then it can also be used for slabs that are either solid or ribbed both solid or ribbed that are supported on all four edges but the corresponding v by l ratio is large so when v by l ratio is large it will act almost as a one way slab in that case also we can adopt this effective width method now the corresponding irc 112 2011 the annexure b3 we can see the corresponding formula for calculation of the effective width of slab for three separate conditions one is slab supported on opposite edges cantilever slabs and ribbed slabs so the first case regarding slab that is supported on opposite edges okay the equation that is given in the code is v effective equals alpha into a into 1 minus a by l0 plus b1 okay where v effective is effective width of the slab on which the load acts this corresponding entire width here is v effective okay and b1 is the corresponding breadth of the concentration area of load the breadth of the concentration area of the load so as such this is the load acting here the concentration area means w plus 2h now remember one thing here w is the width of the wheel imprint okay width of the wheel imprint in this figure here okay this corresponding value is w here now that w if i if i show it here this is the corresponding top of the surface of the road then you have a corresponding thickness of road surface and then you have the corresponding slab depth so the corresponding thickness of the road surface the bitumen or asphaltic bitumen whatever it is that corresponding value is given as h the thickness and the thickness of the deck i call it as capital d so if i have the corresponding load of the wheel acting over a width w then at the top of the deck here at the top of the deck here the corresponding width assuming that this angle is 45 degree it makes an angle 45 degree the concentration the width of the concentration area will be equal to w plus 2 times h okay w plus 2 h this is what we call it as b1 okay that is what is given here b1 equals w plus 2 h remember one thing w as such is the width of the wheel imprint okay w plus 2 times h h is the corresponding depth of the road surface not the deck but the road surface whether it is asphaltic bitumen or whatever it is okay and then you have the corresponding value of a now a is the distance of the center of gravity of the concentrated load from the nearest support so here you have a support here this corresponding support is abutment here so the distance 
from the support till the center of gravity of this load the center of gravity of this load is a here so this corresponding distance is a okay so i had discussed uh, what is a b1 uh, now l0 l0 is a corresponding effective span okay effective span here is this is l0 l0 effective span okay this is the span of the bridge from one abutment to the other abutment the span okay that is given by l0 remember the row the corresponding vehicles are moving in this direction or maybe in this direction okay so this is the corresponding span and then alpha alpha is a corresponding constant that depends upon the b by l0 ratio where b is the width of the slab so this corresponding l dash is actually b b so depending upon the ratio of b to l0 there is a constant value of alpha there is a constant value of alpha i will show you that corresponding constant here here this is the case so depending upon the different b by l0 ratios 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 etc till 2 and above till 2 and above that alpha value is given for simply supported slab as well as for continuous slabs okay for simply supported as well as continuous slabs so this is the case of slab that is supported on opposite edges now in case of cantilever slabs in case of cantilever slabs the corresponding v effective is 1.2 into a plus b1 where a as you told you is the distance of the center of gravity of the concentrated load from the face of the cantilever support so as such if you have a support here like this this is the corresponding slab here and you have the v load here acting here the distance from the nearest support to the center of gravity this is called a okay and b1 is the breadth of the concentration area of load breadth of the concentration area of load now as i told you the b1 b1 is the breadth of the concentration area now I told you there will be a small road surface followed by the deck so you have a small h then followed by capital d so breadth of the concentration area b1 will be equal to the value of w plus 2h so if i draw three dimensionally okay if i draw in three dimensional figure suppose i'll rub this out suppose i have like this okay the corresponding vehicular movement is along this direction so if this is the width of the wheel imprint i told you here it will be undergoing a 45 degree dispersion and hence that corresponding value at the top of the deck is called b1 that is equal to w plus 2h w plus 2h so that is what b1 indicates the different the equation is slightly different 1.2 a plus b1 now some points which i would like to tell you regarding the effective width is that the effective width shall not exceed the actual width of the slab okay so sometimes what happens is that due to the uh, heavy load here and i calculate b effective and i calculate b effective it becomes greater than b it becomes greater than b in that case you should uh, we should limit the value of b effective to b itself okay now the second is in case of the effective width overlaps then the total sum load divided by the total width of overlap should be considered what happens is that in case you have multiple wheels here for example i am drawing the corresponding cross section here okay so this is h and this is the corresponding value of t so you may have say one tire is here and the other tire is here okay there are two axles there is one axle which is having two tires okay one axle which is having two tires so as such what happens is that the corresponding effective width of this and this can overlap okay the vehicle is moving perpendicular 
to the screen here. The vehicle is moving perpendicular to the screen here. So in that case, what happens is that this corresponding effective width may overlap. So in for such cases, we have to sum up the loads, okay, divided by the total width of the corresponding overlap. Okay, total width of the corresponding overlap. This is taken for determining the intensity of load Q. But even in this case where there is an overlap, we should check the corresponding value of bending moment not only for its combined effect but also for this each wheel separately. Okay, When we find the corresponding bending moment per unit width, we shall not only include uh, the combined effect but we shall also include the corresponding effects separately. And now for ribbed slab, I told you there are three cases which are given in the IRC code. These corresponding provisions are given in the IRC code 112-2011 in Annexter B3. So slab on opposite edges, cantilever slabs and finally ribbed slabs. Now for ribbed slabs, the effective width shall depend upon the ratio of transverse and longitudinal flexibilities of the slab. Now as such there is you see, I hope you understand what you mean by a ribbed slab. This is an example of a ribbed slab. Okay. So, as such, if you have, if I am drawing a three-dimensional view, depending upon the flexural rigidity, both along the longitudinal direction as well as the transverse direction. Okay. The effective, dip, effective width shall depend upon these two values. EI value along the longitudinal direction and EI value along the and EI value along the transverse direction. Okay. Now, when this corresponding longitudinal, when this corresponding flexural rigidity of the longitudinal as well as the transverse direction are approximately equal, then what happens is that we can use the corresponding equation for solid slabs. Okay. But as the value of ratio decreases, then the corresponding proportionate decrease must also be taken into account. Okay, there will be a proportionate decrease depending upon the corresponding ratio of longitudinal was longitudinal to transverse. That is important here. So I can write EI longitudinal by EI transverse. Okay, we find this value. Say it is a value. Say say the value is k okay so if k is 1 if k is 1 then we check the value of b by l0 and take the value of alpha as per the solid slab but if k is less than 1 okay then the corresponding value of alpha is reduced proportionate to this corresponding k value now, the next method is Pigout's coefficient method. Now, this corresponding method is suitable only for simply supported uh, solid slabs that are supported on all four edges, assuming that the corners are held down. Okay. So, this is, this is actually a uh, method in which the coefficients of moments and shear force can be obtained from the graphs. Okay. Now, in case the corresponding slab is simply supported on only two opposite edges, I told you this equation as such is meant for supported on all four edges. But in case if it is supported on two opposite edges, then it is actually considered as a special case. Okay, a special case where the corresponding v by l value reaches to infinity. Now, the Picard's coefficient method is nowadays rarely used. Okay. Now, the bending moment, the bending moment at the center of a slab panel, the bending moment at the center of a slab panel carrying a wheel load okay, is given by this corresponding equations MB by ML, where MB is the short span moment and ML is the long span moment. So, MB equals W into M1 plus 0.15 M2, okay, where M1 and M2. M1 and M2 are actually called Pigott's coefficients. Okay. 
precords coefficients okay which uh, we take it from the corresponding value of graphs okay depending upon the different value of u by l v by b and l by v i'll show you an example here ah you see the corresponding value of u and the corresponding value of v u is actually similar to b1 we had discussed regarding b1 b1 is equal to w plus 2 h the same thing is what indicates u and v now remember one thing the direction of uh, motion is along this direction okay so you have here u and v here so you have u equals u equals b plus 2 h and v equals l plus 2 h okay that is what is given here u is equal to contact width of the wheel plus 2 times thickness of the wheel record b plus 2 t or 2 h whatever we call it and then v is also contact length of wheel plus 2 times the thickness of the bearing coat okay the bearing coat means the corresponding between asphaltic between that is there on top okay so remember this is the corresponding long span you have the corresponding abutments or the supports here okay you have the supports here so if i show you in this diagram this corresponding this is the support here like this and this is the support like this these are two different views here okay one view is from this this direction that is shown here and the other view cross sectional view is from this direction that is shown here okay so as such the you have a corresponding moment in both directions around the short span as well as the long span so these corresponding values as such uh, depends upon certain ratios okay the ratios are mark here u by l ratio v by b ratio and l by b ratio okay depending upon that we get the value of m1 and m2 from graphs i'll show you an example here uh, this is an example of a graph so depending upon the value of v by l depending upon the value of u by b and depending upon the value of l by b as such you have these graphs from which you can get the moment coefficients okay from which you can get the moment coefficients m1 and m2 separately so as such the corresponding short span moment is mb equals w plus m1 plus 0.15 m2 w is actually capital w which indicates the corresponding v load now so the pigot curves have actually been developed based on the concept of the thin plate theory okay the thin plates using the elastic flexural theory okay and the short span and the uh, long span moments are directly read from the corresponding curves it is developed by the pigots and one thing you have to remember in that in this corresponding value the coefficient the poisson's ratio for concrete is taken as 0.15 okay nowadays it is point it is taken as 0.2 but in this corresponding curves it is given as 0.15 so here once again i am showing you the corresponding uh, curves that are developed by mp god now some of the disadvantages of using the pigors method is that the load should be placed near the center okay near the near the central location but in actual practice what happens is that load may be eccentrically uh, placed and there may be more than one wheel load that is acting on the structure as such pigors method is adopted for a single wheel load that is one disadvantage here okay so compared to the corresponding effective weight method effective weight method we can use the multiple wheels and we take the combined we find the combined intensity of load depending upon the overlapping of this Uh, overlapping of the corresponding effective widths and then we find the value of q and determine the moments like simple uh, what you call calculation of moment which we had discussed but uh, in this you see we we get the value directly from the corresponding curves so as such uh, there is a limitation that only one v load is assumed to be acting that is one of the problem of of pigors coefficient method so as such pigors coefficient method is usually adopted for only 
uh, what you call uh, slabs which are supported on top of beam girders usually that is the thing that is done and uh, the next disadvantage is that it is not suitable for the for a case in which the wheel load is close to the edge I told you it should be located near the central area so if it is close to the edge this corresponding coefficients are will not give proper results in case of the corresponding smaller value of v by l the corresponding coefficient moment coefficients m1 and m2 will be less accurate compared to the actual calculation and this corresponding method is more suitable when the k value is more than 0.55 k value is actually l by b okay so so far we have been discussing two methods uh, we have been discussing is regarding the corresponding analysis method for a slab okay uh, a slab now we shall sometimes what happens is that in addition to the slab we have also the uh, girders the beam girders that uh, carry the corresponding uh, slab so as such fraction of load that is carried by the different girders the as you see the slab is supported on multiple girders so what corresponding fraction of load is supported by each girder okay you have multiple girders in a girder slab in a girder bridge okay so the fraction of load supported by each of these girders that is given by a number of models okay we have the corbin's method we have the henry eggers method and then we have the orthotropic plate models of which the most common ones are the guyon masonet method and an advanced version of this guyon masonet method we call it the morris little row method okay both of these are based on the orthotropic plate theory okay so these three are the different methods which we shall be discussing for girder analysis okay in the corresponding corbin's theory the cross beams okay you have uh, i hope you you know what do you mean by cross beam if i have a uh, bridge like this you see this corresponding you have these longitudinal girders longitudinal girders here if this corresponding goes like this these are the longitudinal girders okay sometimes in different spacings you will have cross beams that are connecting these two girders okay at regular intervals maybe 3 meter or 4 meter you have cross beams are connecting these two corresponding girders so these are the longitudinal girders and this at regular intervals are the cross beams we call this type of bridge with a, a girder in this shape as a t beam girder or t beam bridge now this corresponding cross beams as per the theory this corresponding cross beams are assumed to be infinitely infinitely stiff okay. depending upon that corresponding assumption this theory has been uh, developed so as such what happens is that uh, since this corresponding uh, cross beams are stiff a load that is acting on the deck okay on the slab on top of the girders instead of affecting only the nearby girders okay what happens all the corresponding girders get deflected okay and that corresponding uh, deflection depends upon the position of the concentrated load i'll show you an example here uh, you see here you see this corresponding load acting this v load is acting at a point here since this corresponding deck is uh, rigid what happens is that there is a deflection there is a deflection depending upon the deflection of all the girders corbin has given the corresponding load carried by each of these girders the load carried by each of these girders depending upon the deflected profile now this is one of the most oldest methods for obtaining the distribution coefficients for the different girders okay this method is so uh, accurate uh, for uh, decks having an aspect ratio the l by b ratio between 2 and 4 okay 2 to 2 to 4 so as such since most of the bridges are in this corresponding range okay and this corresponding method works very good 
and uh, one thing is that actually this method is uh, developed based on the concept of uh, a stiff pile cap okay you have a stiff pile cap that is supported on a number of piles the corresponding Kurban's method is similar to the analysis of a pile cap that consists of a single row of piles now the corresponding equation that is uh, given by Corban is load acting on a beam or a girder A is given as W by N plus W E X1 by sigma X square where W is the corresponding eccentric load okay eccentric load here N is the number of girders E is the eccentricity of the V load from the center line of the deck and X is the distance of the girder from uh, the center line. Okay, so as such, you see, you have this corresponding center line of the deck. This is what we call E. This is the load W. Okay, and if this is say girder number one, two, three, four, etc., each corresponding these girders will be at a distance x. Okay, from the center line. For example, here in this you see the corresponding value of girder 5 from the center line is given as x1 okay so as such the load on this girder 4 will be given as w by n plus w e or e is eccentricity into x divided by sigma x square sigma x square so sigma x square is the uh, corresponding sum of x square of all the other girders so this will be the load carried by each of these girders. So you will have to calculate separately for 1, 2, 3 and 4. Each of these girders separately. This is for, for beam A is what this corresponding equation has been given. Okay. Similarly you can calculate for other girders as such. Okay. Now the distribution coefficient K. The distribution coefficient K is given as uh, this corresponding load on the beam divided by the average load on the beam average on the beam so average load is w by n okay this is the corresponding distribution coefficient k now in case of these two are in case of a single load a single load w now if there are multiple loads if you have a number of wheels as such then the corresponding equation of k is given as k equals sigma w by n 1 plus n e x by sigma x square where sigma w is the sum of all the v loads okay sigma w is the sum of all the v loads now what happens is that this corresponding equ equation is based on the concept that the moment of inertia i is same same for all girders now in case the corresponding i is different for different girders in the sense that the corresponding i becomes different when you change width and depth of the girder okay so if each of these girders are of different sections in that case you will have to use this equation k equals sigma w by m multiplied by 1 plus n e i 1 x 1 by sigma i x square over m it's actually not m but it is n okay number of girders and i 1 is the moment of inertia of uh, given uh, girder and i as such sigma i x square is the corresponding i value multiplied by the distance from the center of the deck of each of these girders okay so as such this corresponding what is w n e etc has been given here now the limitations of the Corban's method is that the span to width ratio is greater than 2 but less than 4. So the L by B ratio should be more than 2 and less than 4. Only between these two ranges this corresponding method is effective or this corresponding method is accurate. Another assumption is that I told you earlier that there is cross beams between these longitudinal girders and that cross beams are assumed to be infinitely stiff. So as such this carbons method uh, uh, states that there should be at least 5 cross girders okay one at the center and two at uh, the ends 
and uh, two at uh, one fourth of the points. Okay, so assuming that the entire deck is infinitely stiff along the transverse direction for that purpose. So if you have a girder like this, if you have girders like this, okay, there should be a cross beam here at the ends, one at the middle, and one at the one fourth of the span. Okay, similar if I have another girder like this. This ensures that the corresponding deck is stiff in the transverse direction. Okay, this is a, okay, this is a longitudinal direction, longitudinal and the transverse direction. And one more thing, the depth of the coarse girder is at least 0.7 times the depth of the longitudinal girders. Okay, so if you have a corresponding longitudinal girders like this, the depth of the cross girders should be at least 0.75 times the depth of the longitudinal girder. Okay, this must be ensured. Fine. The next method is Henry Jagger's method. Now, uh, in this corresponding method, uh, the cross beams, as such, are replaced by a continuous transverse medium of equivalent stiffness. So in the earlier carbon theory, the thing is that the corresponding cross beams are assumed to be very stiff. In that case, the transverse stiffness is almost infinite. But in this Henry Eggers method, the transverse structural stiffness is uh, of the cross beams are considered in the form of a continuous uh, transverse medium that is having an equivalent stiffness instead of point point values a continuous transverse medium of equivalent stiffness is considered now remember one thing that even though the uh, flexional rigidity in the transverse direction is taken into account the torsional rigidity in the transverse direction is not taken into account here now in this method the distribution of the loading okay between the uh, different interconnected bridge systems is based upon three uh, dimensionless parameters. Okay, the parameters are A, F, and C given here. Now A is 12 by pi raised to 4 L by H whole cube into N E I R by E I. Okay, where L is the corresponding span of the bridge deck, H is the spacing of the longitudinal girders, and E I R is the flexural rigidity one cross B and EI is the flexural rigidity of one longitudinal girder and N is the number of cross beams. So as such I can say that parameter A represents the ratio of the span to the spacing of the longitudinal girders and the ratio of the transfers to the longitudinal flexural rigidity. Okay, And F here pi square by 2n into h by l gj by ei r where h is the spacing l is the span g is the correspond gj together is the corresponding flex uh, torsional rigidity of the longitudinal girder divided by ei r is the ei r is the flexural rigidity of the cross beam and f here represents the measure of the torsional to the flexural rigidity so you have the torsional rigidity to the flexural rigidity and then C as such EI1 divided by EI2 where EI1 and EI2 are the corresponding flexural rigidities of the outer and the inner. So C is actually the ratio of the flexural rigidity of the outer the longitudinal girder to the inner longitudinal girder. Okay. So the same thing has been uh, repeated here. So A here represents span to the spacing of the longitudinal girder and the ratio of transverse to the longitudinal flexural girder. Two things are coming under A. And F is the, actually the ratio of the torsional to the flexural rigidity. Remember one thing, F is a bit uh, difficult to evaluate. And C represents the ratio of outer and the inner longitudinal girders. Ratio of flexural rigidity. Okay. Flexural rigidity of the in outer and the inner longitudinal girders. Now, in case of slab bridges, we can, uh, Henry Jagger's method, as I told you, 
if you uh, if you look at that uh, table which we are discussing the first so you you must have seen that henry jackson method is also adopted for slab bridges so in that case for slab bridges uh, where there will not be any cross beams then uh, the value of nei will be replaced by leir okay and for t beam bridges in case of the number of long girders is between uh, 3 or and 4 whether it is 3 or 4 then we can have a possibility of employing the distribution coefficient for employing the distribution coefficients for f equals infinity f as i told you is this corresponding value now uh, the corresponding distribution coefficients can be obtained by the graphs that has been developed by henry and yager that gives the coefficient m depending upon the number of girders whether it is 2 3 4 uh, number of curves has been given by henry and yager and for both values uh, for uh, extreme f equals 0 value and f equals not beta here it's actually f f equals 0 value and f equals infinity value for example i'll show you here a graph here so this these two graphs are meant for f equals 0 and f equals infinity in case of a three girder bridge okay so for uh, i told you the curves has been given from 2 to 6 girders so such graphs will be there for 2 3 4 5 6 etc okay and that too for f equals 0 and then f equals infinity okay this is for parameter a okay this is for parameter a and you can get the corresponding coefficient value m here from this graph okay i'm not going to the detail part discussion regarding this okay but uh, andreas method is also very good compared to the carbons method because of taking the uh, fractional rigidities in both the directions okay now in case of the value of f if it is between any uh, zero and infinity then the corresponding equation as such may be used to get that value okay so mf equals m0 plus m infinity minus m0 in root of f root a by 3 plus f root a okay where f and a you have studied earlier okay the equations have been given here earlier f here and a here so substitute those values and get the corresponding value of mf okay m0 is actually the value when f equals 0 and m infinity is the value when f equals infinity so these things you have to keep in mind now the next method is the orthotropic plate methods now i am not going to the detailed uh, theoretical part of the corresponding uh, plate theory but you, you have to remember in mind is that uh, in this corresponding orthotropic plate method the equations are based on the longitudinal and the transverse bending moments of a orthotropic plate okay and the coefficients has been developed based upon that now a number of researchers has uh, adopted this corresponding orthotropic plate theory for analyzing uh, the bridge deck so they include uh, gayen in 1946 where he assumed the corresponding deck to be torsionless and he had uh, developed the corresponding equations as such then masonet he considered torsion as well and then he tabulated the values for finding the distribution coefficients in 1952 ro what he did is that he increased the values given by masonet by 10 percentage to account for the poisson's ratio as such then uh, later morris and little what they did is that they developed design curves instead of tabulated values they developed design curves uh, that has a single distribution coefficient okay uh, for uh, two cases one in the case when there is no torsion and the other in the case where there is full torsion okay so uh, depending upon the type of bridge a value anywhere between this can be uh, chosen okay so as such uh, morris and little method has been one of the most popular uh, approximate methods that is used today okay for analyzing of any type of bridge then uh, the corresponding questions he had extended the rows uh, equation as such by considering the torsional moments as such uh, as such when we uh, study the corresponding orthotropic uh, model as such two methods usually come up one is gayen masonet method okay and the other one is morris little 
raw method okay as such when you see most of the literature regarding to bridge uh, the corresponding orthotropic plate model will be discussed in these two separate headings one is grand masonet method and morris little rose method okay the corresponding uh, basic concepts are almost the same in which so i'll just discuss a very brief idea of what it, uh, uh, what the corresponding equations are okay we are not going to detail discussion regarding this but a brief uh, outlook now the distribution coefficient uh, for the deck uh, with the corresponding torsional parameter alpha is given by the equation k alpha it's actually k suffix alpha equals k0 plus k1 minus k0 into root alpha okay so as such uh, a number of curves have been uh, developed by maybe different researchers uh, to obtain the value of this distribution coefficient k okay now the load how the corresponding load is distributed to the different deck to the deck okay uh, that is depending upon the corresponding flexural capacity parameter theta that is a term that is included this is in line with the orthotropic plate theory okay and the corresponding torsional capacity parameter for two cases two extreme cases alpha equal to 0 and alpha equal to 1 uh, for a solid having a maximum torsional stiffness is given by the equations theta equals b by 2a i by j whole raised to 0.25 and alpha equals g by 2e i0 plus j0 divided by root of ij where 2a and 2b is actually the span 2a is the span of the bridge effect and 2b is the effective width of the bridge and the corresponding value of i and j is the second moment of inertia per unit transverse width and j is the second moment of inertia per unit longitudinal width and g i0 and g j0 are corresponding torsional stiffness per unit width and per unit length respectively so depending upon the corresponding value of theta and alpha you will have a number of uh, curves from which we obtain the corresponding uh, coefficients at different points so from the corresponding distribution coefficients that is obtained from the curves we obtain the longitudinal bending moments at various points along the cross section by multiplying the mean longitudinal bending moment by the appropriate distribution coefficients uh, this corresponding mean longitudinal bending moment is uh, developed by considering the entire total load on the span as uniformly spread over the entire width okay, the total load is not at a single point but it is fully distributed over the entire width of the bridge okay uh, this way, this as per the plate theory we shall not go into the much detail regarding that aspects okay so as such the mean bending moment will be given as m mean is equal to m by n where m is the total mean longitudinal bending moment divided by n number of girders okay so the design bending moment will be equal to this corresponding m mean value multiplied by the distribution coefficient this corresponding m mean value multiplied by the distribution coefficient k multiplied by the corresponding uh, impact factor if and it is increased by a value of 1.10 or 10 percentage uh, as uh, postulated by uh, my senate and depending upon that the design bending moment can be obtained okay so two things uh, you have to remember here in, in mind is that uh, the entire uh, load is not considered at a single point but it is uniformly distributed over the entire width okay if this is the width this is distributed over the entire width it is not at a, as a point load but it is distributed over the entire width and the longitudinal bending moment per girder okay if you have one girder like this it is running throughout another girder like this that is running throughout another girder like this throughout the corresponding longitudinal girder as such is given by m by n okay where m is the total uh, mean longitudinal moment by n is the corresponding number of girders so m mean you obtain it depending upon that we get design bending moment so with this we come to the end of the some of the approximate methods which we had discussed three met five methods were discussed uh, two for the analysis of uh, slab uh, they are effective width method and then you have um, the corresponding pigors method and three methods with respect to the girder analysis they are henry agas method kurban's method and orthotropic plate model so next we shall be going on to the next topic